Hello everybody! Welcome to Bluebird and Bee Tarot. I am Melanie. I am so excited that you are here today. We are taking a look at the question, does your person still think about you? Are you still on their mind? And then obviously I think that the readings are going to get a little bit into like what is their, what are their thoughts towards you? If you are on their mind still, how? How so? Yeah, all the juicy details. But the main question, the main lens that we're looking at this through is, are you still on your person's mind? Does your person still think about you? So we have three piles to choose from today. The first pile is the Tarot of the Divine. The second pile is the Super Lunaris Tarot. And then the third pile is the Tarot of the Cosmic Seed. I'm going to allow some time on the video where you can look, you can choose, you can see which one you are most drawn to. You can definitely be drawn to more than one. More than one pile might have messages for you. Also, one pile could be more through the lens of what your person is thinking and the other pile might be more your point of view and that could also be instructive to see what spirit wants to help you to notice or see about that. But really anything, any way you want to do it is completely fine. This is your reading. So um, if the time that I allot here on the video is not long enough, you can always pause the video. And then the timestamps for the piles are linked down below. So I will see you at your pile. Hello, pile number one. If you chose the Tarot of the Divine, you have arrived at your reading. So let's get into it. Let's, we're going to start out with some Oracle cards. So let's see. Spirit, tap me into the energy of pile one's person, please. Do they still think about pile one? Is pile one still on their mind? Let me into pile one's person, please. one's person. Do you still think about pile one, please? Do you still think about pile one? Okay, pile one. So certainly the answer is yes. Yeah. Also, F might be an important initial in some way. It could be first, middle, last, your name or theirs. It could be a person that is kind of peripheral to the connection. It could be an object, place, or organization. It would just be something significant as a validation, or alternatively, could be something that spirit wants to direct your attention toward and say, pay attention to this. This is going to be important here. Yeah, so they definitely still think about you. I think the reason why they don't get in touch with you is because they don't know what kind of reception that they would get. I think that they have hurt you really badly and they know that. Yeah, with fidelity here, um, yeah, they, they betrayed you in some way or they were disloyal to you in some way. It doesn't have to be, you know, it doesn't have to be the classic definition of breaking fidelity. It doesn't have to be cheating, but it could even be something like they spoke, they took someone else's side over yours, they took you for granted, they were cruel to you in some way. But with 
Fidelity being represented by Ivy, I'm seeing a picture of how Ivy just, it grows and it's it winds its way into any little nook or cranny that it can find. And I feel like that is what the guilt about this betrayal has done. And one thing that I am really drawn to notice is how the friendship card and the fidelity card are just suffused with green. Green is heart chakra energy. Green represents abundance. Green represents spring and growth and new life. Those are the flanking cards. That is what they want. That is what is influencing what their thoughts and their energy. But at the center here is desolate. That is where they are actually at. That is what their heart actually is. When they think of you, they feel empty. They feel, it feels pointless. Um, either because they just, whatever they have done makes them feel worthless, or they just really anticipate that they are not going to get a good reaction from you. So it just, it feels like an exercise in futility and one that will really hurt besides. Mm. I'm really drawn to the image here of this figure walking the dog, though, because, well, first of all, as I said that, it sounded so dirty and double entendre. -y. So this is not an 18 plus reading. Take that as you will. I'm not going to expand on it. But what I actually was going to say is I think that they are starting on a path to doing some things for themselves, some really healthy self-loving, self-supportive things, like maybe getting an animal um, and, you know, showing some responsibility by taking care of it, seeing how they are, that hard work is returned to them in the form of love and loyalty that will help their brain kind of make the connection there. But also, I think spending time in nature, spending time outdoors, spending time walking. I mean, taking a walk outside does wonders for your mental health. I mean, don't get me wrong. A therapist and some appropriate medication can also do wonders for your mental health. But a walk can really help you see things from a new perspective as well. Um, they might need all three of those things, to tell you the truth, pile one. But this tells me they are on the beginning of the path. Yeah, they are... They are, they're doing the thing. They're not there yet. They have not completed the thing, but they're starting, and that's a good sign. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so the Wheel of Fortune, which came out on top of this friendship card where um, the figure was walking the dog. Um, and that gave me the feeling of, okay, a new start, some self-loving, self-supportive things. It this, this has like new beginnings energy. And so with the Wheel of Fortune, yeah, they are making a change. The Wheel of Fortune generally connotes some sort of like supernatural intervention in circumstances changing, like spirit has turned the wheel, but it doesn't have to be. Like as human beings with free will, it is also well within our capability to, I was about to say turn our own wheel. Why? Is my brain on the jukebox mode of double entendres in this reading? I mean, maybe that is a sign that they think of you as more than just friendship energy. Let's say there might be some benefits thrown in there, at least in their fantasy life. So at any rate, I feel like they are taking their destiny into their own hands, which I think is something that is new to them. So I'm not saying that this is going to resolve itself in a day. This could be, you know, beginnings are often faltering, 
but they are still beginnings and there is such beauty in that and such optimism in that. Yeah, interesting that the Five of Swords with this figure sobbing here comes out on top of Desolate. And there is this um, really strong orange color scheme that ties them together. Um, and I just heard a voice in the back of my mind go, just burn it all down. Just burn it all down. So I think that's the mindset they're fighting against, is this very nihilistic kind of what's even the point kind of energy. But with friendship being one of the flanking cards here, one of the influencing energies, I do think that, I mean, taking friendship at its most core spiritual level, that your soul interacting with their soul in a caring way, in a respectful way, having that rapport, I think that influences them to want to figure out do they know what the point is yet? No, but they're they're trying to figure it out. They know that they want there to be a point, and I think that's a step forward. Yeah, with this Wheel of Fortune card, with the figure here, so music and dancing might be part of um, might be part of their sort of self-improvement quest. Yeah, and if not dancing, like moving their body in a way that is to the rhythm of music. So <laughs> I realize you might be saying, Melanie, that is dancing. But so it could also be something like doing CrossFit and there's like this, you know, Actually, I don't even, I don't know if CrossFit has music going on while they're flipping tires and stuff. I was actually thinking of like boot camp style workout and there's like this pounding, driving music. So just something that ties together the idea of music and moving their body and the music is like part of it. The music is driving it. So sorry about that. I am back. Um, Pepper needed a little attention and I do mean of the... Um, take me, take me to the bathroom kind. And it's not a sort of, hey, whenever you feel like it kind of situation, more like an emergency. Um, but that is interesting as well, because a lot of times when she interrupts me for things like that, and um, yeah, if you are new to the channel and you plan on hanging around, which I would absolutely love that, please do, um, you will, you will hear a lot about Pepper on the channel. So just FYI, that is my dog. She is amazing. But at any rate, I was about to talk about the Eight of Coins, which is, this is an interesting emotional take on the Eight of Coins, which it's very clear from the expression on this person's face that they are not excited about going through this journey. And I think that echoes, like your person knows they have a lot of work and a lot of learning ahead of them. And they're not excited about that. In fact, they're really pretty annoyed about that. And I think that might be a very normal MO as to um, the way that they approach most things. That if they begin to try to master something and it doesn't come easily to them and it doesn't happen right away, they're just like, well, F this noise. That's, that's not happening. And they abandon it. So... Yeah, that's interesting that I was about to say. I really think in this case, you are the carrot that is going to um, the, that is going to cause them to see it through, that is going to make them move forward, that is going to be enough of a, a reward, enough of a promise to keep their motivation up through a very difficult journey. And then I was like, oh, look at all this orange. Orange is carrot. That's amazing. That's so cool. Alrighty, let's get some channeled messages. So I will say as we're moving into the channeled messages, if this reading resonates, 
I would love it if you would give this video a like. It helps the channel so much. It helps it to spread and grow. A comment is amazing. I love interacting with people in the comments. And if you'd like to see more readings like this, I would love it if you would subscribe. Okay, Spirit. Tell me what, cha what, what channel one, what pile one's person wants to say to them in their own words from their heart chakra. Yeah, I don't like to lose ego. That's exactly this. That is exactly this. They don't like to look foolish. They don't like to not already be an expert. Yeah, they don't like things being difficult. I mean, like anybody likes it, but I think this person has a specific aversion to it. Well, that one wanted to come out so much that it flipped itself off of the table and onto the ground. But it says... I'm scared to contact you. Yeah, that makes sense. And that was going to come out right on top of the Desolate and Five of Swords card. So that also makes a lot of sense. I love you. Okay. Sometimes the simplest things are the nicest to hear. My mind is telling me no, but my heart is telling me yes. Yeah, I think that that is the tug of war. That is the conundrum. They are fighting against their own nature. It's their worst nature. It's their better self, which is fighting against their lower nature. But still, they have a tug of war going on inside. Again, I feel like, yeah, I do feel like they will... Yeah, I, I want to I want to speak carefully because I don't want to be overly optimistic and say, oh, yeah, they'll definitely contact you, pile one. That's all up to their free will. But I definitely feel that your soul and your spirit is pulling them forward toward the growth journey that they are meant to be on at this time. And I do think that it makes sense that somewhere along that journey, they will be contacting you. Let me put it that way. Yeah, so I want to get some um, some advice from Spirit. What is some advice from Spirit for you, Pile One, about how to draw this into yourself or how to proceed on your own spiritual journey? Mind your own beeswax. Okay, so I think that that is about focusing on your own spiritual journey and letting them come to you. Like, draw them in. Don't chase them. We don't chase, we attract. Tend to no hives, get no honey. I mean, that's the eight of pentacles right there. Basically, you've got to put in the work to get the growth. And then sweeten someone's day. And honestly, the energy I'm getting from this is I, I really think that you have a very sweet nature. Like, I think that is your just natural state is sweetness, is kindness. And I think that this is spirit saying, don't let this situation eat away at that or, or lessen it or harden it. Focus on staying true to yourself. Yeah, focus on yourself, focus on your journey, focus on staying true to your own nature. I think that's what this advice breaks down to. So sorry about that again. There, something doesn't want this message to get out to you, Pile One. And that something is my dog, Pepper, because I'm not sure what it was, but something scared her. I had to get her calmed down. So, and actually, really, the only thing that I had left to say was, again, if this reading resonated, I would love it if you would um, like, subscribe, comment. Um, I would love to see you on another day at another reading. But mostly, I want to let you know that I am so proud of you, Pile One. You matter. You are loved. You are worthy. And you are enough. Okay, bye, Pile One.
Hello, Pile 2! If you chose the Super Lunaris Tarot, then you have arrived at your reading. So let's take a look. Spirit, tap me into Pile 2's person, please. Do they still think about Pile 2? Is Pile 2 still on their mind, Spirit? Spirit, is Pile 2's person still on their mind, please? Spirit, is Pile 2's, is Pile 2 still on their person's mind? Okay, I do think it's interesting that um, two of these came out in the reverse. I mean, they didn't actually. I was actually holding the decks upside down. I looked afterward. But it is interesting to me that two of them were upside down, that I was holding the decks upside down. Also, C might be an important initial in some way with Caution and Cosmos both coming out. Yeah, so I think what's going on here, Pile 2, is that your person is very intentionally making themselves blind to the energy that is between the two of you. Because with Cosmos coming out here on the flower deck and then um, Slumber coming out here in the um, middle deck, the phrase Cosmic Slumber popped into my mind which to me has a connotation of that you're just kind of willfully ignorant to all of the spiritual energy that is going on around you, that is, you know, your spirit team attempting to influence you in some way, The even just the philosophical concept that there's more to life than just survival, that there is a broader purpose, that there is a spiritual purpose, that there is, you know, a soul that exists in a space outside of this incarnation and that we have a purpose in this incarnation related to that bigger soul. All of those things, I think, are frightening to them right now. Yeah, with caution, I, I'm i hearing, so this old TV show, Lost in Space, there was this robot that could detect danger. The main character kid's name was Will Robinson and it, the robot would like flash like and it would go danger will robinson danger and um that and yeah that phrase kind of entered the zeitgeist at that time and so i but i feel like that is a good metaphor for every time this person's mind starts to drift to bigger thoughts like thoughts about the quote unquote you know big questions capital b capital q uh, they, it's danger, Will Robinson, danger. Um, yeah, because of exactly like the jellyfish that are pictured here, they feel like they are going to get stung. And with harmony, yeah, if you see the figure that's sort of curled up, the fox is kind of curled around this figure. That's a way that animals often snuggle together. And it's a... It's a way that animals protect one another as they sleep. They give each other warmth. They give each other comfort. It increases their bond, this sense of harmony. And I think that is what this person is after. They want peace. They want comfort. They want a feeling of being safe and protected. They want harmony. But I think that... You can never really feel that deeply down to the core of you if you are not in harmony with yourself. If you, there are 
these big questions which are sort of going on a low hum in the background of your brain. And yeah, it's always kind of low key stressing you out. So I think that this person is likely doing a lot of things to give them this false sense of harmony, of safety, of calm, of quiet. Yeah, when I said quiet, interestingly, I think noise might actually be a thing. I think quiet, actual quiet, might be the enemy because then their thoughts can come in. So yeah, I think this is a person that would always have a podcast going or a book going in the car or music, would always have a TV show on for background noise. They can't tolerate the noise inside their own mind. So I think we're going to obviously pull the tarot and get some more information here, some additional information. But if I were to answer the main question of the reading right now, are you still on their mind? I would say yes and no. I think you are absolutely on the deeper part of their mind that actually does want to wrestle with these big questions. But I think they are very intentionally pushing all of that down right now and trying to distract themselves and trying to just create like this false sense of white noise to just let themselves sleep. Um, you know, metaphorically, maybe even literally though, night they might actually be having trouble sleeping. Okay, tell me more, Spirit. Tell me more about Pile 2's person. Do they still think about Pile 2? What does Pile 2 need to know, please? Yeah, if this reading is resonating with you, Pile 2, I would love it if you would um, hit the like button, comments below. I love to interact with people in the comments. Subscribe if you'd like to see more readings like this. All of those things really help the channel to grow. And really, I, I can't even tell you how much I appreciate them. Ooh, a lot of swords energy. Yeah, they're trying to drown out their thoughts. That is so interesting. Yeah, there's repeated butterfly motif here on two cards that came out right next to each other. So I think their spirit team is trying to nudge them to grow, to transform in a way that is appropriate for this stage of their life, but they are re resistant to that. Okay, Six of Cups, Soulmate Twin Flame energy, come on now. Why did I just get teary-eyed? Oh my goodness. Okay, so with so much thoughts, mental energy, um, yeah, trying to quiet the noise, trying to quiet the voices in their mind, this person might have some mental health challenges that, that they are struggling with right now. Depression, anxiety, um, bipolar, something of that nature. Yeah, they might be self-medicating with more than just like TV shows and white noise machine. Okay, if this is going to be true for a small amount of people, so um, definitely if this is not your situation, don't think like, oh no, that I hope not, because I think that for the people that this is true for, you're likely already aware, and it's something that's pretty much really already concerning you, but I do feel like for a certain amount of Pile 2's people, they are engaging or indulging, I would say, in philosophies that are 
toxic or harmful, like maybe sort of red pill stuff, manosphere stuff, um, or other things that sort of make it, it meaning their life, the things they're upset about, um, you know, things not having turned out as they hoped, that make that not their fault, that take the responsibility off of them to change and grow and makes it sort of like the world's fault or society's fault or women's fault or, yeah, like I said, this isn't going to be everybody. This is likely going to be a small percentage of people. But yeah, I think some of some of your people, some of Pile 2's people are, um, yeah, self-medicating with thoughts instead of substances. And the community that is built around those thoughts as well. Yeah, and it doesn't have to be, I mean, honestly, anything can be toxic. Like, there was a time when I was so in such a bad place with um, my, I was in so much pain because of how my twin flame journey was not shaping up the way that, you know, I had envisioned it to go, that I was self-medicating with tarot readings. Um and just, it, it got to an unhealthy level. So, you know, obviously, I believe that tarot readings can be really good for you and really helpful and really awesome. Um, you know, that's clearly my belief, or I wouldn't be putting them out in the world. But even good things can be toxic if you overdo them. So that could also be the situation with this person, is that, yeah, and maybe they're maybe they're over exercising. Maybe they're overly controlling, you know, their um, their diet or something. Just anything to feel in control that is also not what they actually need to be diving into. You know, this could have some relation to pile one as well because. This is talking about learning and decisions, really, I think, is the big energies of the first two cards here. And with pile one, it was learning as well, but also putting in the work, putting in the effort. But I mean, these could definitely be related journeys. But yeah, with this six of cups, I mean, I don't think that your person could get you off their mind, ultimately, no matter how hard they try. Because the two of you are soul connected, and that's just true. Okay, let's get some channeled messages from their higher self. Spirit, what does Pile 2's person have to tell them? What does Pile 2's person have to tell them, please? You make my heart skip a beat. Okay. You have changed me forever. You are tattooed on my heart. So the symbolism of a heart might be significant between you. Like maybe there's something they gave you one time that had a heart on it or vice versa. Um, hearts may be a symbol that you start seeing in your everyday life around you. And that's kind of their higher selves way of sending you signs and symbols that you are still connected Ooh, I've looked at wedding rings. Yeah, coming out right on top of the um, Six of Cups. So yeah, this honestly, that card coming out right on top of the Six of Cups tells me that the energy is largely leaning toward the two of you coming back into union at some point or coming into union, depending on your situation. Um, But it, I'm going to let you know, but I'll do, that's not going to be tomorrow because Right now, they are not even, they haven't even started this journey yet. Like, they are in such denial that a journey even needs to happen. Um, like, they recognize it deep down. That's why they're doing so much. They're doing, like, all the things to distract themselves from it. But, yeah, they're they're probably a little bit of a ways from making that... Uh, making that leap to start. 
Okay, so let's, we're gonna pull some advice from Spirit now. It's going to be all right. Okay, yeah, you don't have to worry, Pile 2. Regardless of what happens, regardless of the events in the future, you will always be all right because Spirit's got your back, your Spirit team has got your back, your ancestors, crossed over loved ones, your angels. You know, you are surrounded by love in the 3D and beyond the 3D. Yeah, be at ease. Yeah, I think that is probably a big part of the journey that you are on. Because in readings like this, of course, we're always looking at your, your person's energy because that's the, what, that's the interesting part, let's be real. But we're always on parallel journeys, right? We're, it's never the situation that we are just like, okay, I'm good. My path is done. Like work complete. I have clocked out of my spiritual journey, just waiting for my person to catch up. Because I mean, I don't care if we live to 120, we should still be growing every day. Our path never ends until it goes on to the other side. Bees move very, uh, bees move very fast to stay still. Hmm. I, this card has never come out from this deck for me before. Bees move very fast to stay still. Oh, I get, okay, no, I get it now. <laughs> what does that mean? But I think it means like they have, in order to just like hover, to stay in one place, they still have to like flap their arms really hard, kind of like treading water. Like you're not going anywhere, but you're, there's still a lot of movement and effort being extended, extended rather. Um, and honestly, I think that's a pretty decent metaphor for what your person is doing. They are expending way more effort to distract themselves from the path that they have to walk than they would just going ahead and walking that path. And ideally, one day soon, they are going to see that. That is going to become abundantly clear to them. All right, so that is what I have for you, Pile 2. Again, if this resonated with you, I would love it if you would, um, you know, give the video a like. That really helps it spread. If you would comment below, like I said, I love interacting with people in the comments. Subscribe if you'd like to see more readings like this. But what I really want to tell you, Pile 2, is that I am proud of you. You matter. You are loved. You are worthy and you are enough. Okay, bye pile two. Hello pile three. So if you chose the tarot of the cosmic seed, you have arrived at your reading. Okay, so let's take a look. Let's take a look and find out are you on your person's mind? Spirit, tap me into the energy of Pile Three's person, please. Tap me into the energy of Pile Three's person. Ooh, when that intuition card hit the board, um, a voice in the back of my mind goes, oh, you know you are. So yeah, you may already know that you are on their mind, probably because I would say this it, this is likely my pile of fellow tarot readers and people that are very tapped in. Uh, yeah, so I think that you know that you are, but it's always nice to hear it. And also, I think that you're probably looking for a little bit more insight into than why in the H-E double hockey, hockey sticks, are they not contacting me? So let's find out. Okay. Mm wow, the two of you are very spiritually connected. Yeah, like when my eyes fell on this beehive card, I heard the phrase hive mind. So I think that your higher selves are 
basically already in union. That Yeah, so something is going on that is making them resistant in the 3D. But you are soul family. I mean, yeah, you are from the same hive. You are from the same soul family, from the same cabal. Yeah, this, this is strong. This is strong stuff. Strong stuff, pile three. I think that this person would actually... I think that if offered the opportunity, they would go back to the time that the two of you were in close contact with each other. I think that's something they actively wish for. I think they want to rewind the clock. With Beehive as well, though, I do feel like this has something to do with the people that they are surrounded by, their community, buzzing, buzz, buzz, buzzing in their ear, or they have a responsibility because bees also represent working in community, working toward the same goal. Ooh, and also, <laughs> I heard a very snarky voice just now in the back of my head go, and following the orders of the queen. So there may be some powerful woman in their life who has some sort of hold over them, either a spiritual hold or there is, you know, they control access to their child or something like that. And so, yeah, there may be, you know, a queen, a metaphorical queen in their life that um, basically has them by the short hairs. They have to follow this person's orders for whatever reason. But I feel like they reminisce about you all the time. I feel like those are such sweet memories. Bittersweet memories, because I feel like, of course, there is. Why did I just say, of course? Wow, I was just basically directly channeling their state of mind. Because what I was about to say is, of course, they know that they can't contact you. They can't go back there. So that part is bitter. But the thought of you is sweet. And it's like, why, of course, they can't contact you? Why? Like, well, because the queen says so, probably first and foremost. But um, yeah, I mean, so that is where their mind is at, that it's just, it's a given. Like, of course, they can't get in contact you, of course, with you. Of course, they they can't, you know, align with you and commune with you in any other way, but spiritually, they they won't even or don't even entertain the thought that they could because of how it would disrupt. Yeah, their life or their the hive because of how it would disrupt the community, babe, maybe. Oh, and I was about to say, I was trying to say maybe, but my lips formed the word baby. So this really could have to do with, with a child that they share with someone. And, you know, honestly, like, I'm sending you so much love and light and positive energy that this connection will work out in a way that that brings happiness and joy and fulfillment to both of you because it's an incredibly spiritually powerful connection. Like, that just hit me like a Mack truck as soon as the cards started hitting the board. But also, I'm not going to fault them for prioritizing their child's mental, emotional, and spiritual well-being, especially when they're small. I mean, that's that's noble. Um, but yeah, I'm really setting an intention for you, Pile 3, that there, there is a solution here that they just haven't thought of yet. And I think that that's why Spirit had me channel that mindset of, well, obviously, I can't, you know, get back in contact with Pile 3. That's a given just to kind of let me know that that is where they're operating from. They are thinking so far inside the box, like the outside of the box doesn't even exist to them right now. So it is entirely possible that a multitude of solutions actually do exist, but because of fear or any number of other, um, you know, strong negative emotions that I honestly think this queen bee has probably instilled in them, 
they they're they have trained they've been trained basically their brain has been trained to just not even go there to just not even think that way because it's dangerous that has been implanted in them at the intuition level that to step out of line is actually dangerous and the, yeah, they're going to have to do the work to overcome that line of thinking. Um, you know, they're grown. They, they, they need to become a self-determined adult. They need to take control, you know. They need to take the wheel of their own life. Which, of course, sounds so simple when I say it. I'm probably being too blasé about it because... You know, there could be a multitude of really complex layers to this situation that I am not privy to because it's going to be different for every single person. But that having been said, I do think that there are other solutions that exist in the world that is not you just forever and always submit yourself to the control of someone who is you know, cruel and maybe even narcissistic. I'm definitely getting narc vibes here. Okay, so yes, we've got the hanged man in reverse, we've got death, and then we've got the two of swords. So, I mean, if that doesn't tell a story, my gosh, like I probably don't even need to talk about this. I, pretty much everybody watching this file is probably a tarot reader themselves. I can just be like, so now there's going to be two minutes of silence on the video while you read your cards. But yeah, I mean... So with the hanged man in reverse, they are, so the hanged man has two, the hanged man, I would say the strongest energy, the most commonly known or thought of energy is being stuck. And that, but there is a secondary meaning that I do think is pretty powerful, which is viewing situations from a new perspective. And I kind of think that they're it's their lack of viewing things through a new from a new perspective that is actually keeping them stuck in this situation. And I mean, that came through even earlier in the reading that they are so trapped in this tiny box of of what options are available to them. They need to see outside of that. With death, though, I feel like, yeah, it's not as easy as it sounds because there are going to be sacrifices that need to be made in order to do that. There are going to be things in their life and parts of their life that they have to let die, that they have to let go. And that is, if you think about situations in your life, even situations that you look back, you know, a year afterwards, two years afterwards, and say, wow, when I look at where I am now, that's the best thing that could have happened to me. Yeah, if you remember being in where you were prior to that really upsetting situation happening, it was the the prospect of it was the scariest thing you could ever imagine. Even knowing you can even know that it needs to be done, you can know that it's coming at some point, that it's inevitable. You can know that it's ultimately going to be good for you, and yet it can still be terrifying, the idea of letting something go. And I really think that is where they're at. They, With the hanged man in reverse, they just literally can't envision what their life would look like if they let this thing go, that they know they need to let go, but they just, they're so paralyzed by the pain of letting it go and by the unknown. But with the Two of Swords, I mean, that is kind of what it really comes down to is that they are going to be in this one, I mean, frankly, really unpleasant place in life 
until they make some hard decisions and potentially cut off some people that are influencing slash controlling them or at least set some hard boundaries. And I don't know that that would be easier than just cutting these people off. Like I said, I'm getting narc vibes. And honestly, that makes a lot of sense too with what I was picking up earlier that they have literally been trained to believe that stepping out of line is dangerous. I mean, it almost reminds me of what it feels like to be in a cult. Like that's kind of the energy as I'm channeling it. Yeah, they are so afraid of the consequences of stepping out of line. Mm, I wish they could just... Man, I wish that they could just... That spirit could give them just a glimpse of what it would feel like, say, three years post getting free. Yeah, maybe... Yeah, maybe that would be something that would be beautiful if spirit could send, send them a dream or something of what it would honestly feel like to be really free of this control. I mean, I think they are going to do it because I I just think it's intolerable. The way they're living now is intolerable. And I feel like they are also pretty spiritually advanced. And so I feel like the pull to get free is going to be too strong to resist forever. But the fear is so big. Like, the fear is so big. I mean, they honestly, their body is reacting like they would be in physical danger if they were to step out of line here, is what I'm feeling. So this isn't, this isn't your normal situation where it's just like, oh, this person is so immature. Oh, they need to get their life together, that kind of thing. I mean, there might be elements of that as well, but the core situation is... They're being controlled by a master manipulator and getting free from that is really hard, but it is their central spiritual mission right now. So I think they're going to accomplish it, but I think they're really scared. And I don't know that that's unwarranted, honestly. Okay, well, on that happy note, let's get some channeled messages. And I will say this is not the most pleasant reading, but if it does resonate, I would love it if you would give the video a like. That does help it spread um, throughout YouTube land. It really helps the algorithm, and I appreciate that very deeply from the bottom of my heart. It helps the channel more than you know. Um, if you would leave a comment, I love interacting with people in the comments. And then if you'd like to see more readings like this, I would love it if you would subscribe. I want to speak my truth to you. Yeah, they are so drawn. So drawn toward you, but so drawn toward freedom. And they should be. Everyone deserves that. Everyone deserves to live their own truth. Yeah, not everybody gets that, but everyone deserves it. I am seeing you in a whole new light. Yeah, I think the light they might be seeing you in is like savior, doorway to freedom. Like, yeah, pathway to the light kind of a thing. Mm, I love everything about you. Oh, you know what? I think that is very specific. I think that actually references conversations you've had in the past where they that could be like physical insecurities and they're like, everything you see as a flaw, I see as what makes you special. Or, you know, maybe you have something that is, you know, largely misunderstood. Like maybe you talk a lot, maybe you don't talk much or just there's there are ways that your personality falls outside the bell curve. And you feel insecure about that, not because there's anything wrong with it, but just because of, you know, a lifetime of feedback from a society that wants nothing more than for everyone to fit neatly center in the bell curve. And this person is like, what are you even talking about? Those are my favorite things about you. Wow, I'm, I just got choked up. I think that's something that the two of you give each other 
is seeing each other deeply and unapologetically for who you really are and that you celebrate all those things about each other that other people just don't get it. And man, man, that's a rarity. Man, I really hope that they can manage to break free from this control and make it back to you because that is such a precious gift to have someone like that. So this is some advice from Spirit. Be yourself. Yes. Yes, that is what is going to shine the light of your spirit into the 5D and draw them back to you more. Um, yeah, it's going to like they're, the compulsion that they feel to come toward you will just intensify if the light of your amazingness is just shining brighter into the 5D. Bumble till you make it. That's good advice for them, honestly. Like, they don't have to have a perfect plan. Perfect is the enemy of good and perfect is the enemy of action. And what they really need to do is just take some steps forward, even if those are faltering steps. Okay, create buzz, not hype. So, yeah, I think that... Um, what I'm getting from that is I think that they have possibly made promises in the past that they didn't live up to. And that may be also a reason why they don't really view you as a solid resource for support and help as they exit this really difficult situation. Because I think they don't know how you would receive them at all or and definitely how you would receive them if they're coming to you asking for a favor um and i think in a way that i actually think is a good idea and very noble and very good for their spiritual journey they don't want to come to you hat in hand they want to come to you as a viable healthy partner and i think that that's exactly what they should do but i don't think the road to getting there is going to be simple nor easy but i think that you are the inspiration for it for sure yeah you're the feeling in my life you're the inspiration thanks chicago and peter satara um yeah, all the young people out there listening to this scratching their heads going huh that's a very good song that you should look up on youtube and i will link it below actually because it is amazing um, yeah, one of the most romantic songs ever. And maybe that song actually means something between the two of you because um, it it did pop into my mind very strongly and it did make me get tears again. Man, I got choked up several times in this reading. So I actually, I think that this connection and maybe especially the precarious crossroads that this connection is at is very emotional for both of you. Alrighty, so that is what I have for you, Pile 3, and I hope that it resonated in a way that um, you were able to get something out of it, something useful, something that is you're going to take away and that's going to help you make your life better, make better decisions, and yeah, just that in general, it's going to help you to improve, improve this situation and your life overall. That's, that's always my aim and intention. Um, again, if this reading resonated, I would love it if you would like, comment, subscribe, all of those things help the channel to grow and to spread so much. And they mean so much to me. You really have no idea. I appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. But what I really want to tell you, Pile 3, is that I am proud of you. You matter. You are loved. You are worthy. And you are enough. Okay. Bye.